Yo, what's up everybody? Buongiorno from Italy, Milan to be exact. I'm Peter. And I'm Yen and we're travel vloggers from New Zealand. It's our first time here in Italy and we're super excited to explore this country. Yeah, we have just arrived a couple of days ago, settled it into our Airbnb. We've been wandering around our neighborhood, getting our sims, things like that. Eating pizza. Yeah. <laughs> but today we're going to go into Milan Central. So we're going to go check out some awesome sites Hopefully find some good food. Yeah, but we'll show you guys around our Airbnb and give you guys a tour of the place. Too. So this is our Airbnb. As you can see, nice and spacious for the two of us. But actually our really good friend is going to be joining us very soon. So that's exciting. We've got a kitchenette here, fully equipped with utensils, an induction stove top, we've got pots and pans, an oven, fridge, freezer, everything that we need. So we've been making just a few little home cooked meals as well. Over there, oh yeah, our Airbnb host even gave us a bottle of wine, which is so nice as a welcoming gift. Oh, hello. <laughs> Here's the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, this is the bedroom. Very spacious, as you can see. Yeah. And I just heard that Yen was mentioning she was doing some uh, cooking. Yes. I say she because it's mainly her doing the cooking. <laughs> and like when I was thinking about booking this trip over to Europe, I was really scared of like the cost food of food. Cost? <laughs> yeah. But it's actually been really affordable um, if you cook yourself a bit at home. And so we've got a little, I think it's called, just down, down the road from us, which is really convenient. And uh, we've been purchasing some like fresh pastas and things like that. And Yen's been whooping them up. They've yeah. been very delicious. Oh, too. thank you. It's <laughs> not real cooking because it's like using all their sauces and all that. Yeah, this place, it over there. <laughs> this place was 110 NZD a night. And I gotta say, it's really good value for Milan, Milan, um, especially because uh, the accommodations here can run pretty expensive. Yeah, we're about 30 minutes out from the city, so not... Oh, yes, that's right, our fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, the little groceries that we've bought so far. Yeah, and show you guys the bathroom now too. Yeah, and here's the bathroom. So it is very nice and spacious. You can see we've even got an Italian bidet over there and the shower head. Plus what's super handy is that we also have a washing machine, which is great for us, especially with our long travels and all that. So we're here in April and it's still a little bit chilly, especially in the early mornings and late at night. So what's awesome is that we've got these radiators and they're all around the apartment. It's controlled by the building, I think Luca, our host, was saying, but you can also change the temperature for having it at five full blast or zero would be off. So yeah, very nice. And Life I like saver it for you. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I always run on the cold side. <laughs> Check that out. This is an old building, but as you can see, it's quite an old elevator too with doors that you have to open yourself, which is very cool and I really like that. It's all extremely well maintained for its age. But we have got a city to explore and I'm super excited about it. <laughs> Let's go. Infrastructure. It's really easy to get around from places and compare it to Uber for example. I was checking the Uber prices for how much a ride would cost from the airport to our Airbnb. It was about a hundred euros which is yeah. astronomical. So luckily we caught public transport and the train was only 10.2 euros which was pretty reasonable for Yen and I. We also bought these tickets here which gave us 10 rides on these trains. Wait, where is it? Here it is. <laughs> And um, there's different options that you can get. There's a three day option as well as a seven day option. This 10 rides option is 19.5 euros. And it's simply um, swipe in and then you're ready to go. Yeah. So let's just take you around here. You do have to definitely find these machines and swipe in though, because sometimes at certain entrance ways, there's no machines to swipe in and you're thinking, oh, maybe I can get a free ride. Yeah, it's because they're hidden. They're hidden, yeah. <laughs> Until you get onto the train and someone comes checking tickets and then you could get a very hefty fine. We've read up to 200 euros. Yeah, so definitely want to validate these tickets. All right, let's do this now. All right, nice. nine left. Let's go catch our train, bud. <laughs>
came across this food truck called El Politico, and it looks super busy. There's a ton of locals around too. Plus, we checked Google reviews. It had very high ratings from locals as well. So it sounds like it's a good place. We're right underneath the castle yeah, over here. so we get to go check that out after. Even though there were a lot of people, it actually moved really fast, which was good. So I have gotten the Vendola. It's got a cutlet, some cheese, ham, and mushrooms. It is a very weighty <laughs> menu. <laughs> Let's have a bite. Mmm. That's good. And see why people like this place. <laughs> I only managed to get the cutlet <laughs> and a bit of the bread. That's delicious. The very nice crumb on that chicken. Oh, I can't wait till I get to the cheesy bit, but I know Peter's hungry, so we're going to flip the camera over to him first. I've got myself the Romani panini, and it looks absolutely amazing. You can see the cheese melted in with the zucchini and then the roast beef. Oh, mm. salivating. <laughs> Oh, man. That is a good sandwich. Perfectly seasoned with just the right amount of salt and pepper. But it's really that zucchini that's all mushy inside. Mixed in with that mushy cheese. Oh, that is delicious, man. <laughs> One big mushy goodness. Mm. And so cool, we have such a nice setting here as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome spot. this place definitely not something that we would normally see anywhere in like New Zealand. No, nope, definitely not. <laughs> We're here at Castello Sforzesco, also known as Sforza Castle. It's one of the most iconic landmarks that we'll see here in Milan, I think. And it used to be a medieval fortress. It was a ducal residence. It was used as military barracks as well. But now it houses a bunch of museums and there are two famous master's works here. One is Leonardo da Vinci. He's got a wall painting. Although I did read before that it might be under restoration, so I don't know if we'll be able to see it. We'll go find out. And the other one is Michelangelo's last sculpture. So that's also very cool if we'll be able to see that too. The courtyard, free to visit, but the museums, we do need to buy a ticket. So we'll go try find that. I have to admit, when I first saw this place, I thought of um, Quidditch. <laughs> and we're like Harry Potter, learn how to you know, learn Quidditch and get on the broom and that sort of thing. <laughs> pretty cool that we stumbled upon Michelangelo's final piece before he passed away and it remains unfinished. The name of the piece is Pietro Rondonini and what's also a bonus for Ian and I is we managed to score these tickets for free. Usually they're five euros but on the first and third Tuesdays every single month after 2 p.m. they're free and also on the first Sunday every single month which is today. many rooms to explore in this museum and we were pretty lucky because although Leonardo's work, the Sala delle Asse, is still under restoration, we were able to get a little glimpse of it. You can see how complex all the designs were and how painstaking it must have been to paint on that ceiling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know how many people would have worked on it with him, but he did do it, I believe it was towards the end of the 15th century. There are a lot of incredible sculptures and artworks in this place though, so it's definitely worth checking out. I'm gonna try aim for the fountain. <laughs> I've got Will a... your wish come true if you get it in? I hope so. <laughs> that sounded like it hit the ground. <laughs> It ricocheted <laughs> off the fountain onto the stairwell and then to the ground. Oh no! <laughs> See a bunch of people up here. I wonder how do we get up here?
I'm pretty impressed that Yin and I managed to stumble our way over to this tower. <laughs> We're about to go up in a sec, but Yin, why don't you show people how we actually got here? Eh? Yeah, it wasn't that hard, let's be honest. <laughs> That's where we were before, and you're just up in there going through the entire way, and you loop back around. And you make it to this point. <laughs> I saw a really cool art piece as well. I'll um, cue the uh, footage of the, me looking at the uh, piece of art intently, but I was like, hey, what do you see in this picture, Yen? She was looking at it and she's like, well, I don't know, I see a guy, I see a skull. But now I was like, what if I told you there's a second person in this picture? And she's like, oh, what? I see a hand. Oh, yeah, okay. And yeah. then she saw the second person. On camera, it actually comes out way clearer because in person, it's very, very dark, the painting. So, yeah. It was cool. My favorite piece. <laughs> of peace. The park is huge and it is so vividly green plus it sort of stretches with lawns as far as the eye can see. And you can just get that peak of the arch in the distance over there. I expected it to be way quieter than this. It's oh like no, packed. There are so many people here. I don't know if it's because it's the first Sunday and so the castle um, museum is free to visit and then everyone else just sort of on flows onto here and there are tons of people. What do we have over here, buddy? This is the Arco della Pace, also known as the Arch of Peace. It was commissioned in 1807 when Milan was under Napoleon's rule. It's really impressive in size when you're standing right under it. It's about 25 meters high. Totally reminds us of the one that's in Paris, the Arc du Triomphe. And it is just quite magnificent when you look at it with all the different intricate details that you can see of course the bronze sculptures that's at the top there and the reliefs depicting events in Italian history. All right guys Yen and I are gonna wrap this vlog up here. Yeah we hope you enjoyed following along with us today. Yeah we're actually gonna be traveling around quite a few different cities here in Italy and so this is just the first of many. <laughs> If you enjoyed this vlog, please do remember to give our video a thumbs up, drop us a comment and subscribe if you haven't already because we'd love to have you join us for the rest of our journey too. Until the next one everybody! See you next time! See ya!